are pretty on Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. It's near the end of the month. I guess it's time for my February book haul. Another swack of books. This is a collection of short stories translated from the Japanese. The author is Taoko Kono, and the title is enigmatically A Toddler Hunting in Other Stories. Translated by Lucy North. And another enigmatic fun fact about this book that it has additional translation by Lucy Lower. Lucy North and Lucy Lower. The translation is 1996, but I believe the edition is new, and I love that cover photograph. Kono was one of those rare birds, a female Japanese writer, one of the most significant feminist writers of post-war Japan, and I want to find out much more by dipping into these stories. Then another blame it on Eric Carl Anderson. I had to buy this as soon as he showed us what it looked like on his channel, and I don't think I'm going to probably end up liking it. It doesn't matter. I just like to play with it in the meantime. Look at that fox. I hope I like it. There's a chance I might like it, but I sure love the, the colors, and don't they go with my blouse? Look at that. What is this about? Historical novel set in Lancashire, 1612. A young woman is 17, married, and pregnant for the fourth time. Okay. I just worry that it's going to have a beautiful cover and be quite disappointing, like, oh, I don't know, the Essex Serpent? I do like to share opening paragraphs or sentences if they have some kind of a standalone quality, and this one doesn't, but I will be looking forward to reporting back. I don't remember who I should blame this one on, but this one has been buzzy recently. When all is said by Anne Griffin, an Irish novel. An 84-year-old guy sits in a small Irish pub, wants to tell his life story to strangers. Sounds like it could be kind of hokey, but I've heard nothing but great things about it. So, and this is a quite a new release. It's Anne Griffin's debut. Opening lines. Is it me, or are the bar stools in this place getting lower? Perhaps it's the shrinking. 84 years can do that to a man. That and hairy ears. Another blame it on Eric. This is uh, uh, one of those ugly Persephone books, but they often publish, not always, but they quite often publish good books. I just think that the, the design aesthetic is terrible. Despised and rejected by Rose Alatini. This is a queer novel. Originally published a hundred years ago, 1918. Uh, she used a pseudonym at, the, at that time, A.T. Fitzroy. That's all I know about it. Do I need to know anything else? Alatini died aged 90 in 1980, was born in Vienna to an Italian Jewish businessman diplomat and an Austro-Polish mother, brought up in London. Whew, there's a lot of hyphens and whatnot in that description. But she does not sound like a boring person. I like reading old queer lit, so I'm going to give this one a try someday. I think I originally heard about this on Kendra Winchester's channel. This is a translation of what I didn't realize until I perused this physical copy of the book that it's actually a collection of novellas called Fish Soup by Margarita Garcia Robayo. Translated by Charlotte Coombe. Robayo is a Colombian author. The third novella is called Sexual Education. Oh my. Oh, I like the opening lines. Oh, I'm not going to read you the full oh, first paragraph, but maybe the first half. Oddly, intriguingly resonant with the opening of Zora Neale Hurston's Their Eyes Were Watching God. Living by the sea is both good and bad for exactly the same reason. The world ends at the horizon. That is, the world never ends, and you always expect too much. At first, you hope everything you're waiting for will arrive one day on a boat. Then you realize nothing's going to arrive, and you'll have to go looking for it instead. I hated my city, because it was both really beautiful and really ugly, and I was somewhere in the middle. The middle was the worst place to be. Hardly anyone made it out 
of the middle. So that has a quite lively energy to it. I'll certainly be getting to this for novellas in November if I don't get to it before then. And because I love the biography of Queen Mary so much, and it deepened my obsession about her mother, the Duchess of Tech, Fat Mary, as she was called. It's not very politically correct, but uh, as a fat booktuber, I get to use that moniker. And this is the biography of Queen Mary's mother, the People's Princess, Mary Adelaide, Duchess of Tech. I just love her. This is from 1980. The biographer, S.W. Jackman, is a Canadian. Printed on lovely paper, and this used copy is in excellent condition, aside from a little scuffing on the side. And the quality of the photographic reproductions is a bit low, but there's lots of pictures in it, too. So there is the Duchess of Tech and her daughter, who would later become Queen Mary. This will be a buddy read later in the year, sometime in the second half of 2019, with Leah. I'm going to be making my Itali Italian, my Irish readathon TBR video. I'm going to film it tonight, too. And so this is one that I acquired for that purpose. If I get to it next month, it will end up being my very first Elizabeth Bowen, The Last September. This is a novel, right? Because I know she wrote a lot of short stories, but this, I believe, is a novel from 1929, set during the Irish Troubles. I have had my eye on this African novel ever since it was published in an, on Amazon Japan website. It finally came down in price so that I snatched up the last copy they had. She would be king by Wyatu Moore. And this is a novel set in West Africa. And then the story travels to Virginia and Jamaica and involves a maroon slave, which I've done a fair amount of reading about of late. And I've heard pretty good things about this debut novel. One of the many things that it's about is the tumultuous roots of Liberia. It actually smells beautiful. I hadn't done the smell check before. Wow. I love the opening sentence. If she wanted to continue, Gabessa first had to rid the road of a slow-moving snake. Can't wait to get into this one. Earlier this year, Natalie of My Reading Days and I buddy read a Helen Garner novel, The Spare Room, and I absolutely loved it, and I've wanted to read more by her ever since. And so this is the first one that I bought, Honor and Other People's Children. And it was like five dollars brand new on amazon i don't know why so i sna snatched it up and now that i've got it home it's actually two novellas in one volume so fine so the one novella is honor and the other one is other people's children i thought it worked really well as a complete title but it's two novellas this one i think i just saw the cover photo on twitter and ordered it immediately because of that cover that is just a stunning cover i think it is called for 2,000 years by Mihail Sebastian, and he was a Jewish-Romanian writer. I'd never heard of him. Translated by Philip Osialeg. I had less trouble with the author's name than the translators. And I have just flipped through it, and it has a really modern feel, because this was published in uh, 1934. And just when you look through it, this does not look like... 1934 prose just on the way it's laid out like short chapters and lots of dialogue there's a really and I've read a few paragraphs here and there and it has a really modern feel in a very appealing way so this is one I think I'm going to get to sooner rather than later it's about a young Jewish student in Romania trying to make sense of his world realizing that he does not belong there opening paragraph I believe I've only ever been afraid of signs and symbols never of people or things my childhood was poisoned by the third poplar in the yard of the Church of St. Peter, a tall, mysterious tree, its shadow on summer nights falling through the window, over my bed, that black band slashing across my bed covers, a terrifying presence I could not understand and did not try to. I'm going to get to this one as soon as possible. Maurice Conde's novel, Segu, I picked up this month. I will, if I don't get to it before, I'm going to do it for Women in Translation Month. She won the Not the Nobel Literature Prize last year, and I hadn't heard of her until then. And this is her masterpiece. She is a Caribbean writer. She hails from 
Guadeloupe. Uh, this novel is set in the late 18th century in a an African kingdom, which I don't know how much of it is based on fact or not, but the African kingdom of Segu. Translated from the French by Barbara Bray. And I picked up these two little books, part of the Penguin... What's the name of the of the series? They were uh, really popular on booktube. I especially remember Dane. I think he read all of them on his channel. This is called Of Dogs and Walls by Yuko Tsushima, translated by Geraldine Harcourt. She also translated Tsushima's novella, Territory of Light, which I read for Women in Translation last autumn, and quite light. So this was a $5 book I found today in my travels, and I snatched it out. Two short stories in this little book. Opening sentence of the first story. The first story is called The Watery Realm. It was in the middle of the summer he turned five, as I recall, that my son discovered the western-style castle in the window of the goldfish shop in our neighborhood. And I also picked up this one today, The Legend of the Sleepers by Danilo Kish. Kish is a Serbian novelist, and I read his most well-known collection of linked short stories, A Tomb for Boris Davidovich. It was a buddy read with Lukash of Totally Pretentious late last year, and we both really, really loved it. So when I saw this for five bucks today, I picked it up. Two stories in this one. Opening sentence of the first story, The Legend of the Sleepers. They lay on their backs on rough, damp hair cloth that was somewhat mildewed from the humidity and had worn through in places from their movements, their twitching, their bones wherever their bodies were in contact with the camel hair, at the back of the head, at shoulder blades and elbows, near a protruding pelvis, beneath heels and calves, rigid as distaffs. So that's my book haul. Thanks for watching.